The rocky mountains stretching across North America dot their snow-capped summits glisten under the sun. And in winter, they become surreal sculptures of ice and stone. How do the creatures adapt to this harsh world, where winter lasts from June to September? How do they find mates, raise their young, and conquer the vast, unexplored lands? What has broken their barrier towards humans? Join us on an epic journey through Canada's last great wilderness in this video. The wildlife of wolves, and why farmers hunt them. We are in Canada, in the Rocky Mountains. This rock, once an ancient coral reef, has been pushed out of the sea for millions of years. Now the fossilized coral lies nearly 10,000 feet above sea level. Winter is nearing its end, but the landscape remains unforgiving. Food is scarce and many animals are growing weaker. A young deer, its ribs pressed through its thin fur, rummages through the snow for anything to eat. This is the most difficult time of the year. Nearby, Shadow, a she-wolf, stalks her eyes locked on the deer. She is not alone. The pack moves as one, led by her and the alpha male beside her. The deer will not be easy prey, but she has a plan. A subtle signal and the hunt is on. The young deer sense danger. It bolted forward, leading the predators into the herd and moved to create chaos. Amidst the panicked cries, he spotted a weaker target, an ailing deer struggling to keep up. They closed in, taking down the deer to ensure the health of the entire pack. This is the harsh, unyielding balance of nature. During these harsh months, deer gather in large herds, relying on numbers for safety. For wolves, every hunt is difficult. This was the first of many days of hunger. Wolves are the kings of the wild, thriving on their intelligence, strong pack dynamics, and ability to adapt to harsh environments. They travel up to 30 miles a day in relentless pursuit of prey. Packs bond together through loyalty and communicate through haunting howls and subtle gestures to coordinate their hunts.
However, when their annual mating season peaks from January to March, their struggles become more intense. The birth of four to six cubs every 63 days requires more resources from the pack to feed them. But what happens when prey runs out and the land is silent? Every hunt becomes a fierce hunt to fight hunger. In this wilderness, the rules keep the pack strong. This creature, having caught the scent from miles away, approaches a hulking shadow of raw muscle and hunger. Usually the wolf pack retreats, yielding their spoils to maintain peace. But today is different it stands its ground, a display meant to show the young that it is still the leader. Ultimately, the wolf pack reclaims their food. As harsh winters and human expansion reduced prey, wolves moved closer to human settlements. Canada's wolf population spiked to around 60,000 in 2010, with each female giving birth to four to six pups each season. This rapid increase prompted them to seek new food sources. Sheep farms are their top choice. She is probing her prey. When she feels no danger, the attack is initiated. Within hours, the chaos had left the farm reeling with damage exceeding $60,000 and nearly 25% of the sheep injured. The surprise raid not only disrupted the herd, but also threatened the livelihoods of families who depended on the farm for their livelihood. This increase in nighttime attacks has forced farmers to make difficult choices to prevent further human-wildlife conflict. When wolves get too close to humans, governments are forced to institute programs to control them. The hunter's journey begins with a mandatory hunter safety course, a 15 to 20 hour online certification that provides the necessary ID for every hunt.
Each state enforces its own set of laws with specialized licenses required for wolf hunting. Non-resident hunting licenses can cost anywhere from $50 to $300, depending on the state. Failure to comply with these requirements can result in disqualification from the hunt, with licenses denied or revoked for violators. In 2023, more than 3,500 hunters were banned nationwide for non-compliance. Additionally, hunting near residential areas or without the proper hunting tag risks hefty fines. To obtain a hunting license, hunters must go through a rigorous selection process. Hunters use Browning designed rifles at WMS Firearms Training in Wales. test Browning and Winchester rifles and scopes at a variety of shooting distances, including over 1,000 yards. The event emphasizes the importance of proper shooting techniques, rifle mounting, breath control, and follow through. Training begins with smaller caliber rifles like .22 and .17 HMR to build basic skills before moving on to larger, high recoil rifles. This gives hunters the skills they need to hunt safely. Prior to the hunt, hunters undergo intensive and selective training designed to prepare them to earn their licenses. In Canada's rugged terrain, participants must endure 72 hours of extreme temperatures designed to simulate real wolf hunting conditions. The course takes hunters through freezing nighttime temperatures, elevations of over 2,000 feet, and snow-covered landscapes that test their endurance. Only 30% of participants make it to the finish line, with challenges such as tracking elusive targets over 1,500 yards and traversing treacherous ravines. Failure to acclimatize will result in disqualification, ensuring that only the most skilled, ethical, 
and resilient hunters make it through, embodying the true spirit of responsible hunting. With hunting season in Canada running from November to March, the hunters will head into the frozen wilderness, equipped with a government-supplied all-terrain vehicle. The vehicle, capable of traveling through the snow at speeds of up to 45 miles per hour, is vital in the pursuit of wolves. With the hunter's tracking skills honed, the chase is relentless. The tense standoff culminates in a moment of precision action, as the hunters successfully take down the first two wolves of the day, cementing the start of the season. Hunt is not without its challenges, however. Hunters often encounter treacherous terrain that is riddled with hidden pits that can stop even the toughest off-road vehicles in their tracks. This is where teamwork comes in handy. Hunting wolves in temperatures as low as minus 10 deck tests both stamina and strategy. To ensure safety and efficiency, a minimum of three hunters are recommended in this unforgiving wilderness. The cold air was tense as the hunter stood at the entrance of the cave. A sudden movement and the echoing sound of a gun broke the silence. The hunter's quick and precise actions were rewarded. A few minutes later, victory was his, and the cave was now silent once more. When summer comes, it becomes easier for author authorities to deal with wolves. Rugged mountains of Canada, the hunter begins a tense journey to track the elusive wolves. Equipped with a sound machine that mimics the howl of prey, the hunter waits in silent anticipation. The wolves, alert and cautious, approach the hunter, despite the obstacles and the ever-present risk of being spotted. At 150 yards, one hunter successfully shoots, taking down the leader wolf and then another wolf at close range. hunting brings an intense, unique thrill, unlike hunting on the plains. From the sky, hunters face tougher challenges, requiring precision and quick decision-making as they track wolves from helicopters across rugged Canadian terrain. Canada, including Alberta and British Columbia, 
have recently allowed limited helicopter hunts to help control wolf populations, with just one aerial hunting competition per season. This method has been instrumental in reducing wolf numbers in targeted areas. Alberta alone reports a 30 to 40% reduction in specific zones, making a noticeable impact. focus is on selectively managed culling, not open season hunts. The successful end of wolf hunting in Canada has brought relief to sheep farmers and boosted their economic stability. Hunters play a vital role in the responsible collection of wolves ensuring that each action is in accordance with ethical and conservation standards. Reporting hunt results helps support wildlife management and maintain ecological balance for future generations. After the hunt is over, many may wonder what happens to the coyote's fur afterward. The answer is that the fur undergoes a meticulous process by the hunter, including cleaning and preparation, before being shipped to a trading location in Canada. At auctions held by North American Fur Auctions NAFA in Toronto, furs are graded based on quality. Light-coloured, heavy coyote furs, especially the sort after Highline grade from Canada, can fetch up to $75, while less prepared furs can sell for as little as $14. Proceeds from these auctions often support wildlife management programs and conservation efforts. To identify real wolf fur in Canada, it is necessary to carefully examine the characteristics of the fur. Real wolf fur typically has three distinct layers, a long black guard hair that provides weather protection, a thick blue or gray undercoat that provides insulation, and a softer middle layer. In Canada, misrepresenting synthetic fur as real wolf fur can result in legal consequences.
Under the Competition Act, such misleading marketing practices are prohibited and violators can face fines of up to $750,000 for individuals and $10 million for corporations. These regulations are intended to maintain transparency and protect consumers in the marketplace. Conservation of nature and wildlife habitats is important to prevent human-wolf conflict. What are your thoughts on responsible wildlife management? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for sticking with us until the end of this video. These approaches have been great at stopping the spread of some invasive species. Got any ideas for even better solutions? Drop your thoughts in the comments so we can all dive into it together. Thanks for sticking around and watching the whole video. If you liked it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And hey, be sure to tell your friends about us too so they can check it out. Bye and see you in the next video.